It's the Q. Here is your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Rick here. We are on the ground at the San Jose Convention Center at the first ever Open Power Summit. Uh, it's an organization where you probably recognize the power part is the Power 8 um, microprocessor from IBM, and now we've added some open, openness to the thing. So excited by our next guest, John Zanos, VP Cloud Alliance and BizDev from Conical, the company behind Ubuntu, and it doesn't get much more open than that, does it? Welcome, John. Thank you very much. Yeah, we've uh, brought our openness to the power chip, so first, let's just talk about kind of what your involvement is with the uh, with the organization, why you guys are here, why it's important, and then we'll dig in a little deeper. Sure, so Canonical's been involved at the beginning as the first OS company to enable power. We focused on enabling CAPI, enabling Docker on power, and enabling Linux. And what we're really focusing on is bringing the developer ecosystem to power. And so what's different about open power? Because power's been around for a very long time. The microprocessor's been around for a very long time. So what's different now? Uh, why, what, you can't speak for IBM, but what's your impression of why they made the change? Yeah, so I'll speak for ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what, what we thought was very interesting that IBM stepped up and opened up the architecture and stepped up and said, let's create a foundation around it like other foundations, Linux, OpenStack, and make sure that a whole ecosystem builds around it. So an ecosystem of other chip manufacturers, an ecosystem of other you know, system manufacturers, an ecosystem of ISVs that can leverage the power of open power. Um, and what our job in the whole exercise and what we got excited to do is to be the OS that helps the developer community see that differentiation that the power architecture brings to the table. So it's, it's interesting, right? Ubuntu's been around forever, Linux has been around forever. So we've seen the, the benefits of open in software for a very long time, pace of innovation, bringing a community together, et cetera. Now we're seeing more and more of that kind of translate into hardware, but I guess the reality is it's, it, it's not like they're building the chips in the backyard, it's really software access to operate the hardware. Is that accurate and are they going to see the same benefits on the hardware side that we saw in software with openness? Yeah, so couple things. First, I think you're absolutely accurate. What we think is that by opening up the ecosystem in total from the chip up, you allow for not only innovation but rapid innovation and collaboration and openness go hand in hand in our mindset. And what we expect is what we see the developers doing is identifying ways they can find new attributes in the chip that they can access and make their code run faster, better, simply put, do things that they couldn't do before. By opening that up, it removes the barriers for developers to think outside the box of constraints that may have existed with proprietary systems. Right, the other thing I think that's so interesting about open is that now you no longer have to rely on just the smart guys you have in the building to really advance a product. You know, you can use the community and you can also use the consumers of, of the product. We were at Open Compute Project last week and you know, and Facebook has really drove that with some of their best practices in the way that they run their data centers. So the fact that like Google and, and really customers and users can now help drive the innovation I think is very different than kind of a traditional we build it, we ship it, hope you like it. Uh, no, absolutely. What's really exciting, and we see this all the time with what we do with the Ubuntu and what we do with Juju, our orchestration tool, and what we do with Maz, which is Metal as a Service, and we actually talked about this at OCP, is that we see not only our developers and the developer community contribute, we see our customers. So a funny example is that at OCP, we showed Ubuntu working with Maz deploying Ubuntu, right. CentOS, right. Windows, multiple operating systems. That was a great demo, by the way. Um, the the metal, metal as a service, if you missed it, it was uh, it was terrific, Mark. I, I was there. It was a very exciting. It, it worked, right? You, you, you take a big risk with demos. We were completely live, and it made it a lot of fun. <laughs> right after that, it went perfectly well. It was a lot of fun. The five minutes before, we were all making sure Less it worked. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it worked. It so worked. really, you know, it is, possible and we are seeing, and so then I guess the question is, are there some, are we at the really steep part of the advantage curve where you're going to see some significant changes in the performance of the applications on power based on some of this new things coming out of this open power? Yeah, I, I absolutely believe that. I think we're at the beginning of the ramp. If you look behind us, there's 14 demos, all of them running on Ubuntu, all of them in an open collaborative way. You know, I think projects with genomes, oil and gas, any analytics are all going to benefit. 
I think the other thing that's going to be very interesting is that as we look at these developers really seeing the advantages of the chipset, they'll come up with new ideas, promote those ideas back into the Open Power Foundation, and that will drive new innovation, be it driven by any member of the foundation. Right. It's just, I mean, it's such a, such a powerful innovation engine, really hard to compete, so it's good stuff. Well, John, thanks for stopping by. Congratulations. I'm Jeff Frick. We are on the ground at the Open Power Open Power Summit, the first one, right? We'll get used to it after we've been to a few more. I'm Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching.